Hi guys, I'm Morten from Playful Synapse. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to make an exploding cannonball in the UA4 engine. This is going to be lots of fun, so just lean back and enjoy! To create our cannonball there are a number of steps involved. I've listed the five main ones here. Step 1. We will create the fractured cannonball from a sphere. Step 2. We will make the cannonball explode, not just break into a pile of rubble, which doesn't really look that uh, impressive. Step 3 is to enable the CCD, that is the continuous collision detection, to prevent our cannonball from falling through the floor every now and then. This is quite uh, annoying, and um, it took me a while actually to figure this one out, so I've highlighted this as a separate step. Uh, point four, we will add the radial force to the cannonball to make our cannonball explosion actually affect the objects nearby. And point five, we will add particle effects and sound to uh, make our explosion actually look in here like an explosion. Let's get started. I would like to use the material sphere as the basis for my cannonball and uh, this is located under the starter content and the props folder. And here we have it. So I right click, select a duplicate, and then I double click. And I would like to create an old rusty cannonball for my project. So under the material selection, I click on it and select, type in rust and the metal rust material. This looks like an old nice uh, cannonball to me, so I'm happy. I click on save. And to make this into a fractured mesh, I right click and select create destructible mesh. In this menu there is a couple of things to notice. First off is the cell site count 25. This is the default value. And this is the number of pieces that your object is going to break into. 25 is quite nice for our purposes. And below that you have the random seed number. If you want your mesh to break up into a different set of pieces, you can change the random seed. But for our purposes, uh, zero is quite okay. So to actually create the exploded cannonball, I click on the Fracture Mesh button. This takes a couple of seconds. Here we go. And to, uh, to preview the exploded mesh, you can just drag this folder. And this looks like a quite nice explosion. Now to make this actually work, you need to change a couple of parameters also. First off is the impact damage. If you leave this at zero, uh, as it says here in the text, the default value is zero, which effectively disabled impact damage. This is not what we want, so I put in the value two. This usually works. And also the default impact damage depth. Also here it says uh, if negative, impact damage is disabled and we certainly don't want it disabled. So I put in the value two here as well and I click save. Now we have a new object here, the material sphere underscore DM, DM for destructible mesh. Let's just drag this into our scene, put it a bit up in the air. Uh, now this one is uh, a bit too big to be an ordinary cannonball. So let's just put in a new scale settings. I use 0.2 in all the uh, axes and uh, like that. This is a bit more like the ordinary scaled cannonball. If I now click on play, nothing happens. And this is because we need to click on the simulate physics button. Console. Play. Here we go, but it doesn't break. This is because we need to enable one other setting, and it's under collision. 
and this one should hit events fire when this object collides during physics simulation and we need to set to yes and if we now click on play it breaks it doesn't explode yet but uh, this is going to be fixed next let's go back to the destructible mesh settings and under advanced parameters there is a field called fracture impulse scale this uh, value sets the speed of the of the pieces from the explosion so the bigger the number the <laughs> bigger the explosion and by trial and error i have found that uh, 10000 works quite nice for our cannonball i click on save and play and this is much better now we have a okay here just so that the cannonball fell through this is what we're going to fix on the next step because sometimes the cannonball falls through the floor and that's really irritating but we will fix that in step three so let's play okay this is nice to make sure that our cannonball don't fall through the floor every now and then just type in in the search area type in ccd and here you have the used ccd setting that's the continuous collision detection click that as true and uh, this problem is solved now let's add the radial force that's going to affect all the objects nearby this is essential to make the explosion real so in order to do that we need to create a blueprint so select the destructible mesh right click and uh, select create blueprint I'm going to call it cannonball underscore bp for blueprint this will be saved in the blueprints folder okay now let's go to the component part and uh, select the destructible mesh first off let's just um, select the things we did for the the cannonball last time let's set the scale right so 0 0.2 2.2 let's uh, set the simulate physics simulation should sh simulation hit events and also find the ccd and select this just the same stuff we did last time but now for this new object in here and also now click it and select add component and radial force just type in rad and select the radial force now the radial force has two parts to it one is a continuous force like gravity or something like that this is not the one we want and it has also an impulse for an impulse force which is uh, like the shock wave of an explosion this is the part we want so first off we select the radius for the component this is the total radius it's, it's going to affect 700 could be a, a good number and uh, the fall off uh, the, the rif constant will just uh, affect everything within the radius just as much and then suddenly stop affecting anything outside the radius but if you use the rif the linear instead it will affect the stuff uh, closest to it more than the stuff uh, further out and this is uh, the the effect we are looking for so for the impulse strength this is the actual uh, impulse shockwave x strength uh, 100,000 is a use a good number for us 100,000 and the force which is the continuous force we don't want that so we set uh, zero for this one this is okay now this uh, impulse uh, force will not uh, just trigger by itself we need to actually set an event that's going to trigger this impulse so uh, select the cannonball object and then add event and uh, add on component fracture this is the event that will be fired 
whenever the our cannonball is fracturing, which of course it's doing when it's hitting the floor. And once this uh, event triggers, we want our radial force to fire the impulse force. So select the radial force, select get, drag out the wire here, type in fire, select the fire impulse, connect it, and this should do the trick. Let's save, go back. And now if we select the blueprint and our new cannonball blueprint, we can drag it up like this and uh, nothing happens. Well, it explodes, but it doesn't affect the, the, the objects nearby. And this is uh, because of two things. First, you need to set the objects to be movable and you also need them to uh, simulate physics in order for this to work. That. If we now click on play, you can see that the table at least moved a bit. It is because all the other stuff is uh, holding it down. So if we choose everything here now, simulate physics, movable, movable, simulate physics, this should be better. So if this uh, explosion was a bit too puny, can just uh, select our cannonball, component, radial force. We had a hundred thousand, should perhaps have a bit more. Let's have, uh, say, two hundred thousand. Sorry. Save, compile, play. Oh, this is much better. So now we just need to add the particle effects and the sound effects to make this explosion look really cool. So to do that, let's go back into the blueprint and uh, let's add a new node. This one is called spawn effect, spawn uh, emitter application. Application. And the particle effect we are going to use is the explosion, P explosion. And the location for this uh, effect is of course going to be our hit point. This is where the uh, our cannonball hit something, hit the floor in our case. And let's add one more. Let's add play. Play, play sound at location. The sound we are going to use is the explosion one. And the location for this sound is the same place, of course. Hit compile, save, and let's try it out. And uh, that was quite successful, I think. So I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial. So, and also that you have learned something. So thank you for watching.